Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we are talking about adding Stripe to an Angular 10 application and how to collect payments with Stripe. If you enjoy this episode and you learn a thing or two, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course the, hit the notification bell. And you also might want to check out our smallbatchdevs.com blog where we convert these YouTube tutorials into a text format or a blog. Um, so make sure you check that out. But without any further ado, let's jump into it. So tell us, what is Stripe? So Stripe is a payment processing service that has a wide array of features. Not only can it handle payments, it also has a pre-built checkout screen. It can also handle subscriptions on a monthly or a yearly basis. And it also has fraud protection, among many other features. And why would we want to use Stripe? Well, do you like making money from your web app? Because that's why you'd use Stripe. So basically you'd implement Stripe into your web app and set up either one-time payments or maybe even a subscription service so that your users can buy goods and services from you. Yeah, and Stripe also comes with a really nice dashboard where you can see everything that's going on, who's buying what, how much money you've made, and how much money you've transferred to your bank account. It's really nice. So tell me a little bit about how Stripe works. So you want to start with, of course, setting up your Stripe account and also implementing the API into your web application. Then you'll be able to define your services and or products that you want to sell through your website. One important thing to keep in mind is that Stripe will take a percentage of each transaction completed. And this is pretty common with any services that allows the use of credit cards or debit cards. So as we mentioned before, the first thing you're going to want to do is create your own Stripe account. So we're here on the Stripe webpage and there's a sign up form that you'll need to fill out for your business or for yourself just so you'll have your own Stripe account. So after creating your Stripe account, you'll be shown this page, which is just your Stripe dashboard. And this is where you're going to see most events that occur with your, within your Stripe account. You can see we've got a $20 purchase already. And this is just from some earlier preparation for this tutorial, actually. And it is just test data. So we didn't actually have to spend $20. Before you can receive payments from your users, you'll need to actually activate your account, as you can see in the top left of the webpage here. And this will basically allow you to tell Stripe about your business, give some bank information so that you can actually receive your payments, and then you'll be good to go. So like Austin mentioned, you're going to want to activate your account, but just so you know, this is a very important step and you're gonna to wanna to take your time while filling out these forms but you're also going to want to do this as early as possible as it could take a couple of days to process your bank information. So before we jump into the code for this tutorial, we'll need to set up the account name, which is the name that's displayed whenever your users actually check out through Stripe. And to do that, we'll just go to the settings here, scroll down a little bit and go to the account information. And you'll just need to fill out this account name here. We obviously have it already done because we were doing preparation for this video. Um, but yeah, just create a name that you'll want to use for your account. So one more step that you need to take is actually setting up your branding for your Stripe account. And this is just going to change the way that your checkout page looks with a icon of your business and a color scheme that you pick. So we're gonna jump into the settings menu and then we're gonna scroll down into the branding. And this is where you can upload your custom icons or logos and pick a color scheme. And you'll notice that Stripe also shows you mockups of what your customer portal and checkout and payment screens are gonna look like. Banana. <laughs> banana. <laughs> it's an expensive banana. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the one that we'll be dealing with, which is just the checkout screen. So you'll want to reference this one when making your color scheme and logo decisions. Next, we're going to set up the public business information for your Stripe account. Um, and to do that, we're going to go into settings again. And once again, we're going to go into account information. And then if you scroll down here, you'll see the public business information section. Um, so you'll need to fill that out so that users can recognize 
the transaction that took place as it will be associated with your business. So for this video, we're gonna walk you through the implementation of Stripe Checkout. And this is just one of Stripe's many features. It's basically a pre-built checkout UI that will allow your users to complete purchases without you having to do any of the setup for it. So now it's finally time to jump into the code for this tutorial. The first thing we're gonna do is actually set up some server-side code using Firebase functions. Um, and this will be to like encode the transaction data before it's sent over to Stripe. Before we do that, we, uh, we need to install an npm package for Stripe. So you can run npm install dash dash save Stripe or this command right here, and it will install Stripe and obviously put it in your package.json. Or you can copy this uh, line in our package.json for Stripe, put it in your package.json and just run npm install and that will suffice as well. So next we've set up a Firebase Cloud function to handle our Stripe checkout session creation on the server side. And as you can see here, we've got our Firebase function and it's just going to initialize the Stripe instance on this line right here. And you can see you're gonna need a secret key from your Stripe dashboard. Now we've got our secret test key in here for just using test data. And this is gonna allow you to use fake credit cards to just test your transactions. But whenever you go to production, you're gonna to wanna to switch this out for your live key. Uh, next, you can see we're creating an actual session instance with the stripe.checkout.sessions.create method. And we're gonna be passing in some data. So you you can see we're going to pass in the product name, the unit amount, quantity, a success URL, and cancel URL. And so really quickly, just the unit amount needs to be multiplied by 100. And this is assuming that you are using a decimal format from your client, like 599 representing $5.99. You'll have to multiply that by 100 so that it comes out to 599. This is just the format that Stripe wants. Quantity is just how many of those products that the customer is gonna be buying. And don't worry, we'll set up the UI for this in the client side code. Uh, lastly, we're just going to be setting up the success URL and cancel URL. And these are the URLs that Stripe will redirect the user to after checkout has successfully completed or if there was an error or the user backed out of the transaction. And at the very bottom of the method, you can see we're returning the session ID. This is important for the client because the client is going to be calling this method to set up the Stripe checkout and then we're going to need to pass back the session ID to the client so it can actually make that transaction. Just as a quick note, if you're not very familiar with Firebase functions, we do have a video that you can check out right here um, and it will just introduce you to Firebase functions and how to deploy them and whatnot. Um, so definitely check that out. Yeah, it's a good video. It's a marvelous video. Now we're gonna work on the client side code. To do that, firstly, we need to install the Stripe JS package. So to do that, you can run this command to use npm to install the Stripe JS package. And once you do, you've done that, we, uh, well, we created a donate component just to display the functionality of Stripe that we're trying to accomplish. So this is the HTML for the donate component. And all you really need to know about this is that we have an input field for a USD, a US dollar. Um, and then of course a button to actually send off that donate process. So now let's jump into the TypeScript aspect of our donate component. And you can see we've got a couple variables. We've got an uninitialized Stripe variable, which we'll deal with later. We also have a donation amount, which you saw in the HTML, and it's just set to a default value of $5. And we also have a is getting checkout Boolean that will turn on and off when the user is actively checking out or not. And that's just to hide the input field and show a spinner when they're going to the checkout screen. So now in our donate method, which is triggered on the click for the button that we showed you in the HTML, what's happening here is that we're creating a local instance of the Stripe library, which is what's using the PK test, which you'll want to replace with your key variable from Stripe. And then we're creating a checkout session callable function. And this is specific to Firebase functions. So we're basically going to call 
call the cloud function that we just created earlier in this tutorial. And we're gonna pass it the product name, the quantity, and the unit amount. And the unit amount is the donation amount from the input field of the HTML that we just showed you. And what we're gonna get back is a session ID in our dot then method. We're then gonna use that session ID to redirect the user to a custom checkout screen that Stripe has made for our Stripe account. And this is gonna to pertain to the branding we set up earlier. And we just have a dot catch in case anything goes wrong. And then we have a dot finally to just turn off the spinner once the checkout is complete. So now it's finally demo time and we ran ng-serve to serve up our local application. As you can see, we have a UI for our donation now. So if we just put in a random number here for our U our US dollar, let's say $420.69. Yeah. Totally random. It's off the top of my head. Um, and then we hit our beautiful moving donate button. I don't, we're gonna hit that, yeah. Yeah. We'll be sent to the this much better looking Stripe page for paying with a card. And you can fill out your card information here and actually be able to fulfill your transaction of a donation on um, at least our website, eventually your website. <laughs> we're gonna fill in some quick information real quick just to even further the Demo. So with Stripe, you can use a test card of uh, 4242 all the way down. And then you just have to make sure that the month and year is in the future. So we're just gonna do a 130. And then the CVC can just be any number. Name on the card can be anything. And the zip code is just a random number. And then so you can go ahead and hit pay and this will actually go through in your test data. You can see we had a successful transaction and we were redirected to our success URL that we set up in in our functions directory. So now we're back in our Stripe dashboard and as you can see we got a very large payment of about $420.69. I wonder I wonder who was so kind to do that. But if we go to our payments here, we can actually check out a little more information. Um, and as you can see here, we got a payment of about $420.69 from a lovely small batch devs customer. Oh, we can click on it too. <laughs> and you can see more info like how much, who's it from, last four digits of their credit card. You can also see how much Stripe took out. So they took out a hefty $12.50. So they deserve it though. One important note to remember is that these transactions that were showing you are not tied to any of your users, whether they're authenticated or unauthenticated. You can see their emails in the Stripe dashboard, but you're going to want to handle these transactions in a way that ties them specifically to your users for your web app. So today we talked a little bit about the Stripe payment service. We talked about a little bit about what it is, how you can use it in your app to, well, receive payments from people for goods and services and a little bit about how it works. Then we showed you how to custom implement a donate button in your web application. And then we also walked you through a demo of that donate button. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. We definitely hope you learned a thing or two. And if you did, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course hit the notification bell. Um, and also check us out on the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, bam, you got it. You can do it. Just hit the follow button on all those platforms. But anyways, thanks for watching again, and we'll see you next time. Peace. So now it's finally Temo. <laughs> Temo dime. <laughs>